Covalent bonds versus ionic bonds. We want to discuss some of the things you're going to see in this lab based on the fact if the compound has a covalent bond or if it has an ionic bond. The main difference between these two is how the electrons are being handled between the different atoms that are bonded in each compound. For example, covalent bonds, those share electrons between each element. Ionic bonds, they gain or lose electrons, so there is no sharing. Well, what is the result of that? We're going to show you some generic, generalized ideas that we can test in the lab, and then you can make a determination of whether or not you're looking at a, a compound that has a covalent bond or if it has an ionic bond. First, if we look at the formula of anything that is covalent bonds, it is found that there's always a nonmetal with another nonmetal. So this is a huge hint when looking at their chemical formulas. And the reason why that they're both nonmetals is that they're going to have similar electronegative values. The reason why that is because if they both are closer to the, uh, each other on the periodic table, then there's less likely a uh, chance that they're going to be stealing each other's electrons and they're going to be sharing electrons. When you gain or lose electrons, you lose electrons and gain them because there's a huge difference in electronegativity, meaning that one atom can steal the electrons from another one quite easily. So that would mean that they are far apart on the periodic table. So on the left on the table, you have metals, and way on the right, you have non-metals. So that's what is going to uh, be seen usually in the formulas. That results in a large difference in electronegative values. All right, so you're going to be doing a melting test or a melting point test in this lab. So we're going to test bond strength. So when atoms share electrons or when they gain or lose electrons, will they have a stronger bond? And what you're going to find as we continue on is that a covalent compound usually has a weaker bond. So you're going to have a lower melting point. And ionic compounds have a very strong attraction to each other. So that bond strength is much higher. So you're going to have a stronger melting point, meaning that these would melt last. If you were all melting them at the same temperatures, these would melt last. Solubility is the ability for something to dissolve in water. So this is important. Normally, covalent compounds dissolve in nonpolar substances. nonpolar solvents. So in this case, in this lab, we're going to be using an alcohol called ethanol. That's going to be my nonpolar substance. On this side, we are dealing with ions, and ions have charges, and charges are, dissol are, are uh, attracted to other charges. So when we say polarity, polarity means poles. Poles are a fancy way of saying charges. So we are going to say that they dissolve mostly in polar solvents. So what's a polar solvent? It's an easy one. Water, H2O. So a lot of times how you can kind of think of it is ionic uh, bonds or ionic structures are usually polar and covalent compounds are usually nonpolar. And there's a saying that can be used a lot here is that like dissolves like. Translation, polar dissolves polar and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. It's not always the case, but it's a, it's a really good uh, approach. Lastly, conductivity. Conductivity is the ability for something 
to carry a charge. Well, again, ionic compounds are ions. Ions are atoms with a charge. So if we put in a probe that uh, tests conductivity, so you, you'll take your solid and you dissolve it in the water, if it can conduct electricity or uh, carry a charge, then it would have high conductivity. Well, that would be with an ionic bond because of the ions, because of the charges. And covalent compounds usually have a low conductivity. This will be helpful for you to determine whether your compounds are covalent or ionic.